Hey guys, Alex here from AlexVegas.com and I have literally just had a drive in the new Audi VT60 uh, 2021 version. I don't know what they're calling this. I think it's just the same T T60, but you have to excuse me here. I, I didn't anticipate this filming today and I only have my phone. So um, this is just gonna be a real quick video. So I've literally just taken this for a drive after five, 10 minutes. Uh, I went into the local dealership saying, hey, can I borrow one of these for, for a few days and, and do a comparison video for, for my viewers and uh, test it out. They are very short on stock, but they have more coming in next month. So we said once they get more, more stock, then for sure I can have it for a few days, which will be awesome. So be sure to subscribe because I will do a full comparison video uh, with the new model compared to my current uh, early 2021 version, the facelift version. Um, but he said, hey, take this for a cruise now. And um, I thought, you know what? Let's just do a quick, quick first impression, super first impressions video. Like literally I've, I've driven about, about 5Ks in this thing. Uh, I did manage to take it on the open road though. So um, was able to test out the new engine because this engine does have a, oh, this vehicle does have a new two liter bi turbo. You definitely notice that first turbo kick in quite early. Um, but it wasn't game changing performance, although this is a ute though, right? Uh, I'm sure if it came down to towing and stuff like that, it would be a lot better. So obviously this ute is a totally new new design, not just a facelift. I think my ute, the, uh, let's call it the Gen 2 version, um, I think looks really good, um, especially from the front. This one probably looks, I don't know, it just starts to look a bit like every other ute on the road these days. Um, though it does have, you know, a lot of new sleek lines and especially the lights and stuff at the front, quite a modern styling look, which some people might like. Um, when we go around the back, we see that the, the tray is different to mine. Unfortunately, it still has that same issue with the gap and obviously that would get built up with debris and whatnot, which is a bummer. Um, the, I don't know what they call these side mounts on the back of the tray. They are removable, which is good. Like I personally would take them off I just just from a practicality point of view it makes loading firewood and all that jazz a little bit difficult and unfortunately as well there is no um over what, what would you call it lip over the edging which is a bit of a bummer um so my first gen you this deck liner came over top this one here and the second gen you unfortunately don't have it um so yeah that's that's that when we look inside in the back here uh, nice and spacious, nothing too extraordinary to report about there. Yeah, I can't see any big changes. Maybe these handles are new. I'm not too sure if my vision had them. <clears throat> and when we come in the front though, we see a lot of changes. So um, it's quite nice. It's totally redesigned in here. Well, no, actually I won't say totally redesigned. Like when you look at the doors and, and the glove box department and all that, it's identical, all this stuff here looks pretty much the same. It's just when you come in here, the center console, this is all new, uh, obviously new screen, and steering wheel, new controls, and down here as well, all, all, all new setup. So, um, I mean, I jumped in and yeah, figured it out pretty much straight away. It wasn't like, you know, we when we got our Skoda Kodiak and I was literally like trying to drive and I had to pull over and, and just, you know, try and reorientate myself because I hadn't driven a Skoda before. So, um, you know, obviously coming from an Audi V, it's, it's all very similar, but it has been all overhauled, which is nice. Um, I'm not a big fan of all touchscreen buttons, so maybe that's something that you'd have to get used to or I'd have to get used to. Um, but it does look nice. The screen is quite nice. Uh, there was a reversing camera. Let's see if I can get that on. I'll play around with it later. Um, but there's a few more bells and whistles going on uh, in here uh, in terms of functionality. Um, I noticed the lane departure warning was on and you know when I pulled out of a lane I, I got a warning pop up um, so that's cool I guess from a safety point of view. I know some people don't like it though. Um, but yeah so overall um, actually I noticed as well that the uh, rear mirror up here has got auto so maybe that's like an auto dim. Uh, up here everything's all the same. Um, as my version, we've got start stop engine. I know that's available with the previous generations anyway. It's just I never got the top models. Uh, you've got light dimming controls, uh, cruise control is the whole setup's a little bit different. 
um, your volume and all that through here. It took me a while, I was, I was pushing across to try and turn the volume up, but you actually have to jog that up and down like so, uh, which is slightly different. But yeah, when we look at this spec sheet here, um, so in New Zealand, this particular version, 44,000 plus gist plus on-road. Uh, so it's a little bit more expensive than the one I got. I believe, I think I was only in the 30s, but but everything's going up now, so it's crazy. Um, so yeah, two liter by turbo diesel. Obviously a lot more power here. So this is putting out, where was it? 160 kilowatts. My one's only putting out 110. I, I can't remember the torque figures on mine, but this is putting out 4.8 newton meters. Uh, eight speed auto, I think mine was only six. So that should definitely make a nice difference when you're driving on the open road. Six airbags, I think the safety is all the same. Yeah, it looks all the same sort of safety stuff though. The lane departure warning probably gives it a bit of a bump up. Wall control, tuned suspension. So that, um, again, I, I haven't taken this, I've only driven it for a few Ks, right? But uh, I went over a few speed bumps and down a slightly rougher road. Um, and I think it's good. I think it's better than, than my Gen 2 version because uh, I think that's gone too stiff. So. I think this is quite nice. Um, maybe they've finally found the sweet spot. Smart key, so that is a nice add-on. I don't know if this is like the top luxury model or if they're just standard across the board now, but uh, you know, the smart keys are kind of cool for entry and exit, um, always a good thing. Reversing camera and overhead camera, which is what my other one didn't have. Leather interior, I don't have that either. Um, 10 inch touch screen, so we already touched on that. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, nicer cosmetically and you're getting a nice power power um bump here as well which is good uh i'm gonna wrap up this video and when i get access to this you know for a weekend i'll do a full side-by-side -side comparison and uh you know take it on a long trip and and get my get some better thoughts and, and impressions and i wasn't even going to film this today i literally just popped into the dealership and asked them if i could you know get one for for a weekend or something and he said i'll take this for a spin now and i thought oh yep cool and then i was like you know what let's just go park up somewhere and, and whip out the camera so hey yeah um yeah i mean it's it's kind of exciting when i saw it i was like oh neat um would i rush out and upgrade right now well financially i, I no, i wouldn't um but if i didn't buy the earlier one then maybe i would have spent the extra money to get this just because it is nicer inside i uh, got a few more bells and whistles and stuff and that screen is a lot <clears throat> better so yeah be sure to subscribe uh and you'll see my more detailed comparison in the next month or so hopefully uh if there's anything you want me to cover when i do that video uh leave your comments below and i'll do my best to um cover that and test them out um but yeah all right i'll talk to you soon bye